Today we are working on a project from Lion Brand Yarns. Welcome back to Good Knit Kisses. I'm your host Kristen and my friends with Lion Brand Yarns would like to present you the Loom Knit Ridged Cowl and this is done on the Martha Stewart Crafts the Lion Brand Yarn Knit and Weave Loom Kit and I have this already set up. We'll show you a couple pictures here on the parts that you need and an alternate way to set that up. We are going to run through this entire pattern courtesy of Lion Brand Yarns and you can find it on their website. I'll include the link in the description on this page here. And you are going to need your Loom Knit kit and you'll also need two skeins of the Lux Fur from Lion Brand Yarn. And it's actually a combination of wool, acrylic, and a little bit of nylon. The Loom Knit Ridge Cowl pattern actually calls for the Martha Stewart Crafts Lofty Wool Blend Red Dahlia. And of course you can do it in any color you like. Um, but I am substituting it with the Lux Fur because I think it'll be beautiful. This is what it looks like when you've got it out of the skein. And so we're gonna do this today. If you're looking for the numbers, You've got it right here. Super bulky number six. Let's get started. For this setup, you will need to insert 34 large pegs into every third hole, and you're going to cast on one peg and then skip two, and then you have another large peg and then skip two and continue on until you have 34 pegs in the holes. You're using one semicircle 28 hole piece, then a 36 hole piece then another 28 hole semicircle, and then another 28 hole piece. I've set up the loom in the recommended fashion. We've got two of the long 36 hole peg units, the pieces, one here, one here, and then on the ends are the two semicircles. Now one semicircle you're really not going to use because we're knitting in a flat panel. I've got started here, skipping two holes and putting in another peg. So you're going to go all the way around until you have a total of 34. Now the trick is to get them all to connect correctly. You have to place a peg to the side of where this connector sort of points here in order to get it to lock in position. So you need to start it uh, right here. I've got the connector and then where it points on one of these semicircles. Then I've started my green peg and now I'm going to work my way around skipping two. So if you go all the way around, put in on your other semicircle and then go all the way around and it actually stops here. The peg actually ends before it connects to your unit here. So you can either um, put in a, another contrasting peg, say this the smallest one, and lock it in position and then work your way around it. It should be fine. I wanted to show you an alternate way to set up the loom to make it smaller if the first way is too long and cumbersome. First we have two semicircles, which are the 28 hole pieces on the ends. And then I actually have four in between, one, two, three, four of the 12 hole pieces. This is knitted in a flat panel and then we'll connect and seam at the end. I'm going to start by making a slip knot. And some of the techniques I'm going to show in here, you can see them slowed down on my channel. Make your slip knot and put it on your first peg. Put the extra tail on the inside of the loom. We're going to cast on in the way that the pattern calls for. The way that they cast on is you e-wrap one twice and then you knit over and then we're going to e-wrap the next twice and knit over and continue doing this all the way around the loom until we get to the very last peg. Okay, I came to the end of my flat panel. If you notice, I have a smaller peg here and all I'm doing is I'm holding these two looms together to make a connection. Now we're gonna begin working our way back around the other side of the loom. We're gonna continue going back and forth in a flat panel motion. Row one calls for purl. We're going to put our 
working yarn down below and with our loom knit pick we're going to pick it up and pull it through the top like so. Pull off the old and put on the new loop. I'll do that again. Pick up the bottom loop. Pull it up like you're picking a pearl off the ocean. Pull off the old loop and put on the new and work your way down. Picking it up. Pulling it off. Putting this new one back on. You're going to continue all the way around and we'll come back for the next row. Row two is going to be knit. And on this pattern, it doesn't call for if it's supposed to be an E-wrap, a um, U-knit, a, a regular knit, a flat knit. I'm actually going to do a U. It closely resembles a regular knit stitch, but it's faster to do, and it doesn't uh, work up as tight as a flat. So how we do that is we're going to put our working strand in front. And I do want to tell you that um, I left this first one back here as a slip stitch, but it doesn't actually tell you to Go do that. Go ahead and make yours a purl stitch. We're going to now knit this first stitch and make it a U. So we're going to take our working strand, put it in the front, pull it back behind, and lift the bottom loop over the top. That's it. So now put the working strand behind the peg. Lift it up and over. Remember to put the working strand in on the top of the peg and lift it up and over. This is going to allow you extra length in your working strand and make this stitch nice and loose. If you put it all in front and make a flat knit like this, it's going to work it up too tight and your cowl will be too short on you. Continue working in this way all the way around. We've completed row two, now we're going to purl row three. Put your working strand down below the first peg and lift it up. Pull the old off and put on the new loop. Continue purling all the way to the other side. We've successfully completed row three, and now we're going to knit rows four through seven. So you're going to knit the next four rows, and that will complete your first set. You wrap. completed rows four through seven and now I'm going to do another series of doing one row of purl and four rows of knit and I'm going to do this three more times until I get to row 22. Don't worry I'll put the instructions on the screen and remember to pause your video as I'm pausing this for time. I may fast uh, show these a couple of these steps quickly but uh, I'm not going to leave the whole video up as it would be too long. So go ahead and purl this row and when you get to the end do four rows of knit and repeat three times
just completed row 22, which is knit. And I want to show you the back of the loom to where how it's coming out. And you're showing this is one section here. If you can see, it has a little bit of a ridge. And it would be no, more noticeable in another color. Uh, also, I'm not using the E-wrap stitch. I'm using the unit stitch. And I believe that it would get a little bit bigger. So far, I've got six inches. And the final measurement of this in the original um, an original yarn is supposed to be from nine, uh, a nine by 20 inch. And I'm getting ready to complete the last three rows here. We're going to do a purl row, a knit row, and a purl row, and then bind off for our cast off. If you wanted to add on two more sections here, uh, that would be a great idea if you're doing it the way I am, if you're wanting it um, a bigger finish. But I'm just going to make this a very small mini cowl. And um, but you can continue on, and so far I have not changed uh, my skeins yet. So we're going to complete. Uh, we're going to work on row 23, and we're going to purl this row. Continue purling your row, and meet back up at the end. Completed row 23, we're going to knit row 24. Knit row 24 and come back to the end of that row. We've completed row 24 and now we're going to purl row 25. This is our last row and then we'll be binding off. Great job, you've now finished your cowl. All you have to do is bind off and then we're gonna finish by seaming the two ends together, the two edges. And we are going to do a loose bind off. You can do a flat method type, but we're gonna do a loose one which is gonna match more closely the original cast on loose edge. I like to think of this as the slip knot method. We're gonna take our working strand and put it through the middle and we're going to wrap Lift the bottom loop and pull the top through the bottom to make a new loop from the working strand. Use your left hand, or if you're coming from the other direction, use your right. You can do this in either direction. Pull the working strand through your loop and then pull it a little bit tight. Just snug against the peg here. And so you've got a new loop. Now we're going to use our new, I'm going to call this the working loop, and place it over top of the next peg that you have. So this one's going to be number two, and we're going to do the same thing. We're going to go put our tool underneath the loop on the peg here, which is your stitch, and then pull through down towards the bottom this new loop from the working yarn, and then do the same thing. Grab your working strand and pull it through, making sure it's tight. Now this loop will get large, so just kind of pull on it until it gets small. And then do the same thing. Take your working loop, pull it through the bottom of your third stitch. There we go. And don't forget to make your slip knot. Take that and pull it on through. Alright, and then tighten that back up. Now try not to get these too tight on here, just make them a little bit snug so that your yarn is going to be light, nice and movable. You're going to leave all these on the peg, continue working your way around, pulling through and making a slip knot. Go all the way around the loom and we'll meet back up at the end.
All right, we've made it down. We've uh, got the next to last one done, and we're going to do the last peg. Go ahead and knit it as you have been. Pull through that knit loop, and then make your last slip stitch, and pull that. And then we're going to actually make one more. Um, you can make it a little, pull a little in here. Make one last one. And we're going to take our scissors, cut our yarn, and we can pull through. Now we're actually going to take it right off the loom. Just pull all of these off the pegs and take it off of your loom. Okay, so we have pulled this off of the loom and where it was on the corner on the semicircle side, it's actually stretched and you can see that here. And so all you're going to do is start pulling out the other ends. Just kind of lightly stretch that. and then go back a long way. Okay, now that you see that you have done that, it is just gorgeous. Actually, the way that the Lux fur works, um, it has, uh, it's made these very light ridges, and you can also use an E-wrap stitch for a bulkier look here, um, but the ends where the garter ridge was and then the cast on and cast off edges make a nice pretty scallop. And when you start fanning this out, it actually makes a nice little curl. It's like a wave. Got one long piece. And we want to take it and put these two ends together. Now you've got your original beginning strand here, and you've got your uh, cast off edge here. What we're going to do is seam these up. And you can use the method that you enjoy and like to use. Uh, you could do a blanket stitch. If you do that, it's going to make a little ridge on the inside. So um, just know that. And then um, if you want to do an invisible seam, stick with me. And we will do an invisible seam. That way, if you want to make it reversible, you can. Off. <clears throat> you can use any kind of seam you like. But I would like the invisible so that you don't see it. And it doesn't create a ridge on the inside of the cowl. You want to line up your edges and stretch the fabric out to make sure it lays correctly and you want to have all the stitches kind of line up. It's a little harder to tell with the Lux fur, but that's all right because it's going to be a little bit more forgiving for this project. So you want to line up the edges nice and evenly so that you're going to make a large tube shape here. See this is going to become your tube for the cowl. And we will weave in the beginning and the ending uh, strands here in the end. Right now you want your tapestry needle, uh, large eyed tapestry needle here. And I've got a contrasting yarn uh, threaded in. I've actually knotted it just because this one slips easy, but I wanted something bright so that you could see it. But for your purposes, go ahead and use uh, your original yarn, the one that matches your project. So. Go ahead and start on the end, and you want to just go on the top side here. And we're going to insert our needle on the edge and pull up through the first stitch. And with this yarn, you can see that there is a thread. Now you see on this, there is a nice thread in between, and that thread is what you can see your stitches with and be able to pull through, so you want to look for that. So we found the edge and we're going to pull through. Make sure you have enough cut yarn which is about three times or a little bit more the length uh, uh, that you're going to be doing. So you're going to go one, two, three and cut your yarn and you're going to be pulling through until you get a loose end here and just leave that for now and we'll weave it in and knot it in later. And so you've gone from the down up towards the middle, going to go over and go to the bottom 
side of this one, pick up that stitch, okay, and pull it through. And you're going to make sure that it lays on top so it's going to bridge over that gap there. Now we're going to go back to the top side here and we're going to pick up the next stitch and pull it through and come to the other side and pick up the next stitch. and pull it through. We're going to go back over to the other side and just try and grab the edge and now go to the front And I'm just going to show you how when you start pulling on this and just pull it tight, you can see that it hides your seam. Now you can see a little bit of my pink, but whenever you get in your yarn that you need uh, that, that matches, it's actually going to be invisible. And so just continue going. Uh, I'm going to crack this open a little bit and you can tug on it so you can see if you stopped on the top or bottom. And you're going to continue going along this entire edge and then you're going to weave everything in. I've gone back and put in the Lux fur just so you can see uh, how it, seamless it is. So you can't even see this seam, it's very invisible. And now I've gone to my last, last stitch, you can see where it's just one little part to connect. I'm on the top side and I wanna pull this through. And before I finish, I'm going to leave, there's a little bit of a hole here, and I want to pull that on through. So we've gone back through our hole. We've now made uh, a knot at the end to tie that in, and we can cut the rest. Now you just take a crochet hook, and you're going to put it through one of the adjacent holes, one of the next stitches. Wrap that around and pull it on through. And you're just going to weave this in. So pulling it through. On this, on this uh, yarn, it's really forgiving, and so you're not going to be able to see where you're weaving it in as much. So you can just start weaving in these ends and complete that. And there you have your beautiful Loom Knit Ridge Cow by Lion Brand Yarns. Stop by their website for the free pattern. And thank you very much for joining us with Good Knit Kisses. On behalf of my friends at Lion Brand Yarns, happy looming.